So then on the David Orton Show, we're joined by the boys from Joker Out. Good evening, gentlemen. How are we? Hello. Hey. Hey. Well, it's not yet evening, but quite okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly, almost. But anyway, so first things first, tell us about the new song. That's what everybody wants to know. <laughs> tell us all about it. Um, well, for those who haven't heard, our new single is called Sunny Side of London. Um, and I'm guessing that will be very flattering to our UK viewers. Um, uh, but actually it doesn't really have a lot to do with um, London as a city in itself, but it's kind of a metaphor for our um, concerts, for our relationship with our uh, fans and how our, how we just feel when we're on stage. It's an ode to our fans and our, to our listeners um, and I think everybody who listens to it will know what it's about. And especially if you come to a show and you hear it live, then you'll definitely know what it's about. Yeah, speaking of you guys going on tour, how is the tour going? How's it been going? Uh, great. Uh, we just came back from our first ever Nordic tour. Uh, we had like uh, six, let's say, well, five concerts, but um, five concerts plus a guest appearance with Elvis Costello in like uh, six days. So it was pretty intense. Um, yeah, we went to Oslo, Stockholm, Helsinki, Turku and Tampere. So yeah, three countries and five concerts, uh, six concerts in, in five days. So it was pretty intense. Um, <laughs> and luckily for us, every show was sold out. Um, the fans were singing our songs in Slovene and it's, it's all we wished for. Uh, even before we applied for Eurovision. Yeah, speaking of Eurovision, so how was your time in Liverpool? So, right, because I remember seeing you guys at, in, in Liverpool and also way back when you guys did, I don't know, it was, you did the London Eurovision party beforehand in April and that went off. Like, everyone was, I was upstairs and everyone was jumping up and down like maniacs. But tell us about how you found your time pre and post Eurovision, like kind of like the whole time in Liverpool and stuff like that. Um, well, you have to understand that Eurovision was, let's say, quite a, a gamble for us. Um, mm. We didn't know what to expect. I mean, nobody really knows. But on the other hand, we were, we have been like quite big Eurovision fans for a long time. And maybe it was somewhere at the back of our minds that we really, we want to do this sometimes. But at the same time, Eurovision in Slovenia at least had this kind of negative connotation that if you go there, you'll be a Eurovision artist. and. Nobody has in Slovenia ever really made anything out of their Eurovision appearance except like maybe have some um, added fame and success in Slovenia. We're the first ones to ever kind of grab more, more than uh, what was, let's say, um, what we thought we could. And our biggest goal was always to have concerts um, uh, outside, of, outside of Slovenia and this just like exploded our wet dreams into reality, let's say. Um, so we're very happy that we went to Eurovision. We even had a, actually a lovely time there. We, we thought it was gonna be much more competitive, but we met a lot of great artists, um, a lot of new friends, which we are now visiting all across Europe. Um, we, we did a tour with the Wild Youth Boys from Ireland. Um, we went and visited Alessandra in Oslo, and we went to visit, of course, Karia came to all three of our Finland shows. And, and we met May Muller. All oh, right, we played ah, with May, yes. Yes, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. it's... And uh, Mia also. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Mia is gonna be our opening act in Amsterdam. It's gonna be like, like this whole community that we've now become part of, and it's incredibly lovely. And Liverpool feels kind of like our second home because we spent like almost a month there. And it's like so small that you can have a grip of the city after such a, let's say, a short amount of time. Yeah. I can definitely say that from being up there for, for a month as well. So I can pretty much, it almost becomes like a second, as you said, like a second home. So uh, moving on from that, we, um, so I know we've got not much time with you guys because you are manically busy. We literally had like over 300 like plus listener questions because on our Twitter thread, like the listeners just went, mad for it the baby news went mad for it as you've probably seen from like, your social interactions anyway so first question is from claire and she's asked because are you guys gonna go back to dublin because the two gigs in june were awesome oh thank you um well definitely i mean dublin was incredible both of the gigs were and they were our first outside gigs of like 
full uh, full gigs outside of Slovenia, um, and they gave us a very uh, great welcome, I think, like an Irish one. Um, and we <laughs> we love everything about their culture. We love the the bars with music, um, their and beers, Guinness. Guinness. Yes, we're craving for some more. <laughs> so I think. At, at the let's say uh, spring of next year, we might end up there again. Okay, well, that's good to know. So, uh, Stacy also asks, and this is just a bit of a random, a little bit of a random one. If you could be one of your fellow band members for a day, who would you be and why? Oh, that I would be Yura, so I could play drums. Yeah, and annoy everybody with my noise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Damn, Ayura is a good shout. Yeah, just so we won't be repetitive. Let's say, <laughs> I'd like to see, I'd like to see how it is to be the singer on stage, man. Okay, in one yeah, gig. So let's good. say, Boyan. Although I would not like to have the pressure that he has all the time, so one day would be more than enough. I mean, I, I would, I would uh, love, love to uh, spend the day in each of my um, co-members' skin. Um, so, I'll choose you, you two. Oh, just because, thanks. Yeah. Just because thanks. we're here. We're here. <laughs> on, on a good match. match. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that, that's a really good answer actually, to be fair. So, uh, Sadie asks, if you were to sing another Eurovision song at the, co- at the competition from history, who would it be and why? So, literally any Eurovision song from history is yours to choose from. What would you go with? Fairytale. That would be cool. Fairy tale. Oh, but, but maybe it should be like a group thing because we're okay. a band. So, uh, like Verka Serduchka or something. Okay, <laughs> that would <laughs> be, that'd be a That'd be epic. That would. That'd, That'd be good. Like the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. So, um, Vanessa asks, what was your favorite moment in Finland from the Nordic side of things? God, the gig in Tampere, the the Tampere. yeah, the Tampere gig was great. I mean, all of the gigs were great. Yeah, but... um, Tampere was like the last one where we really gave our all. Like we were at the finish line, and after that, we went out to party. So I guess that's a good shout. But I would just yeah. say, my favorite moment from Finland was well, first of all, meeting up with Karia um, after like three months of not seeing him. And secondly, playing Cha 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 live because, uh, and to be able to perform with him, that was an incredible experience. Because I remember the first time that I saw him perform Cha Cha was in Madrid, I think, uh, at the pre party. Um, and I remember just going like oh up God. till then, like the people were like, okay, they were like, they were good to the artist. Mm. But when Karia came on stage, like people went fucking crazy and everybody was like, Cha Cha. And I was like, damn, if we can ever perform with him, that would be great. Mm-hmm. And that came to rea- uh, like that became a reality. Yeah. So, next question is from Susan, and she asks, what is your current favorite song to perform live and why? Mine is Sunny Side of London. So is mine. <laughs> it has a, I don't know, it, it has fun parts and uh, like the moment will. Um, when all the the whole venue just screams as loud as they can, it's like it, it just hypes you, hypes you up. Like we, we measured uh, the the loudness mm. of the scream in on the Nordic tour, and I think the record was 127.3 decibels. Whoa, that's mad! Incredible, yeah, yeah. Like, Damn. Well, Normal concert PAs are like up to 100, 105 decibels. Probably. Yeah, like, 100. Like, yeah. that's in- insanely loud. Jet engines are 130. <laughs> good great. That is, that is damn good going, I can say that. Um, so, um, next question is from someone on Twitter's name is Dylan. So, great name there. Uh, what were your favorite gifts and also some of the craziest stuff that fans have given you during the tour so far? We should just turn around. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, like behind us, there's a, a whole uh, array of bras with um, lots of Instagram handles inscribed inside. <laughs> um, also, crazy sunglasses, like 
everything that you can imagine and then just throw some sparkles on it. Mm. Mm. A lot of bracelets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a lot like. But my, my favorite gift, it was Pokemon cards, like the booster pack. <laughs> <laughs> what about your tattoo? I just... What, which tattoo design? Oh yeah, one girl made a design. Ooh. The That's made incredible. This. She made a whole whole list of like Joker out team to do so. Mm. We also got a lot of so it's yeah all very wholesome. Mm. Nice. Speaking of Pokemon, this leads into another question for one of the listeners. Josh asks asks this: Which is your favorite Pokemon and why? My Ganger because he's purple. <laughs> <laughs> mean. <laughs> I like, like Nato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like Mewtwo. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know a thing about Pokemon, so... Fair that's enough. It. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> like the, the the only one I know, so let's say that one. Fair, fair enough. So, Speaking of like other other stuff as well, but this has come from the fact that uh, there's a Twitter group that I don't know if you've heard of them called the Plastico Radio Truthers. Um, they're asking, how do you feel about the fans now that they've talked to you so well, and also will you come back to the UK besides Ireland anytime soon? Um, how do I feel about our fans? I mean, I pretty much feel the same as ever about our fans. In- incredibly grateful and um, like happy that we we have this connection with them and that they come to our concerts and it's very humbling to see so many people come to our concerts um, uh, the only let's say extra layer is that we're even more impressed by our uh, foreign fan base that they take the time to learn a language which is like so niche they would never have encountered a, encountered it um, if they had not heard for us or or if they had not by chance uh, flown to Slovenia or something like that. So thank you so much. And uh, we're coming back to the new UK next year, we promise. Nice. Um, last last few questions. I know I know you've got a million and one things to do. Also, you've, you're in the middle of the tour, obviously. Uh, Daily Joker Out asks, and I think this is going to be a very specific question, so you guys will probably know the answer to this more than probably I do. Do you still have the scrap? Do you guys still have the scrapbook you were given in Manchester? Yes. Yeah, we do. Where, where, where is it? It's somewhere in here. Um, I think it. Okay. Uh, we'll try. <laughs> I think it was given to us by Stacy, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so there's this incredible scrapbook which was given to us by one of our fans. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, her name is Stacy, and she's come to a lot of our gigs uh, ever since uh, after Eurovision. And it was, it contains um, like hand transcribed uh, messages that she got from our fans from around the world on uh, um, like giving us some good welcomes some um, I don't know uh, just warm hugs and yeah and, and I don't know ah it's over there and she she transcribed it and I, it must have taken her so long and such an effort to put into and thank you so much really um, I think it, it well <laughs> uh, we well, we but definitely have it. It's there. It? It's there somewhere. Yeah, it is. It is. So, uh, speaking of books, uh, Karen's asked, "What? Where do all the books in the studio come from? Because you're famous for having a load of books. Um, <laughs> where, where do you don't you like have any specific place that you get them, or do you just collect them as you go? Well, they used to be in the library, mm-hmm. but they um, are a bit old and uh, are not used there anymore mm. so they just decided to, to give it to our friend actually who also has a, a big studio filled with books because uh, like we don't have books just for aesthetic purposes yeah. but also for a uh, sound diffusion ah yeah i was gonna say that that makes a lot of sense having them for sound for sound deadening so last couple of questions um from manda will you ever release a version in in a studio form of cha 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 with carrier <laughs> um i don't know i don't think so um i think i think the lord of the lost did a good studio version of that <laughs> We don't need to do another one. You'll just have to come to maybe another Finland gig to hear it. 
Fair enough. And now, uh, now this question we've asked to everyone who's done Eurovision this year. This is from from a person called Kittens. Uh, she did she like Twitch stream and all that kind of stuff. So and she likes cats. So hence the name Kittens. She asks, "Do you have a favourite biscuit? And if so, what do you like?" Yeah, I do. Uh, I know if they ha have a name. Oh, oh I know what, what you're going to say. <laughs> that's very regional. Yeah, yeah that's that's very it's, Slovenian thing. It's, yeah, it's it's like a. A biscuit, a very simple one, like just a butter biscuit, just with with uh, chocolate on top, <laughs> yeah. in oval shape, and it, know, it's exactly yeah, those those <laughs> are good. Like they're made in in my town, so that's why I have a special bond with uh, them. I also have a favorite biscuit. It's it's from this company called Molino Bianco. Um, they have these kind of apple okay, I don't know. Cordimela. Cordimela. Yeah. They're called. It's, they're kind of like small little apple pies, and they're incredible. And I'm gluten-free, so he I usually biscuits. don't eat biscuits. But yeah. I love the the, the gluten-free strobe waffles. Ooh, yeah, those yeah. are the Dutch. Those are the. <laughs> <laughs> That's a strong answer. So I know Lorraine actually said her favorite was cookies, like like chocolate chocolate cookies and milk. So there you go. So there's been some very different answers, but. Thank you so very much for joining us. I know we've got, I'll send you the link to the whole, all the Twitter th threads so you can actually see the amount of questions that we've had. So because we've literally had so many questions, so little time. So I know a load of, load of babies really want to get more questions and we'll, we'll hopefully pick this up again when you guys are back in the UK as well and on the next single. So thank you very much for joining us tonight, guys. Well, thank you so much for having us. It was a pleasure and uh, we're excited to see you next time on Gorgeous Radio.